Hello guys and welcome to Power BI Zone. Today's topic of discussion is date tables. Now, why do we need a date table, right? And what are the various ways in which we can create a date table? We will be discussing all of these in details. So right now I have imported this particular file and I will be giving this uh, as a link in the comments as well. So I have just imported a single table which is having fact internet sales. So let us see why do we need a date table first of all. You see there are three different dates in my table. One is the due date, the second is order date and third is ship date. Right? I hope you are able to see this. Let me zoom this a bit. Okay. So as I was saying this is due date, the second is order date and the third is ship date. Now, if you are able to see this properly, there is a small calendar icon in the beginning of these date columns. Now, what happens in the backend is Power BI is creating three different date tables for these three different columns, right? And which slows down the performance a lot. So, in comes our date dimension. And this is, by the way, is also uh, recommended uh, as a standard practice in data warehouse that you should be having a date dimension. Right. We will quickly go ahead and see how many ways we can create a date dimension. So the first way that you can create a date dimension is obviously through your, uh, you know, tables or the data source itself. If uh, your data modeler is kind enough, he will go ahead and create a date dimension in the data warehouse itself, right? Which you can easily import in Power BI and then do uh, your joins with the facts and stuffs. This is the preferred way. However, there we are having ways to create the date dimension itself in Power BI. So the easiest way is I will just give you a script. This is a very simple script in Power Query. Okay, don't have to uh, do much. You just have to copy paste this script. You will be able to get the date, uh, you know, dimension very easily. And by the way, let us just have a quick look at this script. So let me zoom this a bit. Okay, now as you are able to see this, uh, there is a from year and there is a to year, right? So in my case, I am I have given the from year from 2000 till the year 2021. So in your case, you can go ahead and modify this accordingly. Let's say if your data exists from 2010, you can give the from year as 2010. Then this, there is an official, you know, fiscal year start because some of the clients will be saying that, okay, my Fiscal year is supposed to, let's say, start from August, which is obviously unusual, but there can be a demand from the client. So what you have to do is start of fiscal year, you have to give over here as eight instead of seven. So you, you can just modify these, uh, you know, simple steps and use this script very effectively. Now, let me show you how we can go ahead and create this in Power BI. So let me copy paste this script. You go to Power BI, you let us go to transform data. In comes our Power Query Editor. Okay, so we can just right click New Query. We can give this as a blank query. Okay, go to Advanced Editor and just copy paste this. Right, so you have the entire script pasted over here. Now, no syntax errors has been detected. You just click on Done. Right, and we have the date table or the date dimension created in a single step. Right, and it will have everything it will have the date, it will have the year, it will have start of the year, end of the year, month, start of month, end of month, days, all these useful things because which can be customized very easily. Okay, so let me go ahead and rename this query one as date dim. Great, we will just go to close and apply. Great, the date table has now been loaded in our model. So let me expand this date dim. Okay, see as I was telling you, Power BI will automatically create the, you know, uh, extra tables for each and every date column, which is what 
which is what it is doing exactly with the date deem as well. So if I click on this date, there is has created a date hierarchy. Now, I hope you're able to see this. Let me zoom this a bit. Now, what is ideally, we did not want this, right? We came to the date dimension because we did not want Power BI creating extra tables behind the scene and putting more load into our model, right? So we didn't want to avoid this. So how to do this, how to, how can we say Power BI, okay, you do not create extra tables from the backend. We can very simply go to file, options and settings, options. Based on the requirement, obviously, you can go to the global or the current file. In my case, I want to just affect this particular current file and the data load. You will find something called as time intelligence. And this is very, very important step. And this is a very important interview question as well. So how you can just disable this inter, you know, uh, time intelligence is just disable this auto date time feature and click on OK. Now, what you will find is all these symbols has disappeared. Right, so you see there is the calendar symbol and the hierarchy that was in the date has disappeared. If I go to your fact internet cells, you see this order date, it is not having the date hierarchy any longer. So that means Power BI has stopped creating those extra date dimensions that it was creating from behind the scenes. Next step is we have to tell Power BI that this is my date table. So for that, you have to go over here in the date dimension and there is something called as mark as date table we have to click as mark as date table once you do that you have to select the primary key so in my case the primary key is date i'll select this date it has validated successfully remember the date should not repeat that is the main uh, fundamental of creating a date dimension right whatever your primary key is it should not repeat so in my case the date is not repeating it is has been validated successfully i'll click on ok Great. Now I've marked this as date table. The second step is you have to go to the model, right? And you have to do your linking between your fact and your dim. Uh, interestingly, you see, once you mark this as date table, this icon will come before the, uh, you know, primary key, whatever you have selected. And I want to actually join this with my order date. Okay. So this is my order date. I'll join it with my date and Power BI will automatically create a one to many relationship because in one day you can have several orders so that is the complete scenario right so that is how you can build a date table using a power query this is the second method the third method that i'll show you is you can create a date dimension using dax as well so if you have seen my previous videos uh, there is a very uh, you know, uh, famous uh, DAX called calendar or calendar auto. In this case, we will just use calendar. Uh, let me go ahead and since we want to remember calendar, calendar auto, the output type is of type table. So we have to select a table. So just go to new table over here. Dim date using DAX just to bifurcate this okay and uh, what calendar auto does it it will scan all of your uh, columns and it will select the highest and the lowest you know values of date and it will try to create uh, all the dates in between so let's say giving an example if your lowest date is 1st of jan 2010 and your highest date is uh, let's say 2021 31st of december it will create all the dates in between and give you a tabular structure automatically. This a bit. So as you see, the calendar auto has automatically created a, a date column uh, starting with 1st of Jan 1999 because this is the uh, lowest date in my data model, right? Uh, then there is 2nd of Jan, 3rd of Jan, 4th of Jan, 5th of Jan, so on. And the last value is that of 31st of December 2022. So it has created unique dates between 1st Jan 1999 and 31st of December 2022 and presented it to me. Now that is what calendar auto will do. 
now what you need to do is you need to create extra columns and this is a bit tedious which is why i do not prefer this so much as compared to the simple script that i was showing you earlier so let's say i need to extract the year out of this so i say year and then you have to use the dax called year you have to give the column name So this is what I have given the column name, enter and it will automatically extract the year out of this. Now let us say that you need to create a new column and you want to extract the month. So I give this name as month and I use the DAX function called month. Okay and next inside month i have to give a date so the date that i'll be giving is the same uh, deem date date right and i'll be getting the month number right so this is the january so that's why you're getting one when february begins you'll be getting two okay uh, next we can go ahead and create week so there is a week number you can get if needed so we will there is a automatic date dax function called week num right and it will take the date again i'll give the date and i'll get my week number right so this is the first week this is the second week this is the third week and so on uh, lastly i'll be having my day so let me go to new column uh, for the day there is an inbuilt function called day Great, and I'll be seeing the day over here. So as you saw that I am creating this manually, the year, month, week number, day, and all these columns I'm creating manually. This is how you'll create a mention manually. This is going to be tedious. So I would recommend doing it through the Power Query mode, but this is one more way using which you can go ahead and create a date dimension. So Hopefully you are clear with all the three ways of creating the date dimension in Power BI. And that's about in this video. And guys, if you are liking my videos, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and turn on that notification icon to get all the latest updates from Power BI Zone. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.